morning class and welcome to the practitioners forum of the Gimpa Business School. As business school graduates, you would be interested in joining some professions. And this morning, we are here to introduce you to some of the professions so that when you graduate, you make a decision. Or even whilst you are in school, you make a decision to join or to register for any profession so you start preparing yourself that by the time you come out of school you would have even finished um, getting your profession so our profession is the accounting and finance professions the accounting and finance profession my name is Regina Mensonoma and I, I'm a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants and also a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Taxation Ghana so for our outline this morning, we are going to look at the accounting and finance professions. We'll look at qualification. We will look at certification. How do you get certified as a professional accountant? Which professional bodies can you join? What special knowledge, what skills, what behaviors do you need to exhibit as a member of the accounting and finance professions? What career progression would you have? What innovative tools do you need? as a professional accountant what are the expected challenges or is everything okay is everything fine when you join the profession you are not going to have any challenge we would soon see and if there are challenges how do you deal with the challenges if there are challenges in the profession how do you deal with the challenges so this will be our outline for this morning's presentation so the accounting profession what is it all about what is accounting profession all about? As the name implies, accounting, if we say account, it means you are accounting for something that has been entrusted in your hands. So you are accounting for it. That is what the profession is all about. So in a simple definition, I would say it's a process of identifying. You need to identify financial transactions in any environment. You need to measure those transactions that you have identified. And when you have identified, you need to communicate. You communicate those transactions or the financial information that you have gathered. About what? About an entity. It could be a business entity. It could be a charity. It could be any association. Even you have your SRC. Somebody needs to account for the stewardship because monies are collected. They spend their monies. They organize programs. At the end of the day, you students will want to know the monies we contributed, how have you accounted for it? That will be the work of an accountant. So we communicate financial information about a business entity. And why do we do that? We need you to make a judgment. And if you are going to make a judgment, you are going to make a decision, you need to be informed. You don't just sleep, you wake up, you get a dream, oh, I'm going to do this. No, you need to be able to prepare based on some information that you have. So that is what accounting is all about. And we have various uses of accounting information. And we want the users to make decisions based on reports that have been given, financial reports, financial information that has been given to them by members of the accounting and finance profession. So that is what basically accounting is all about. Accounting for resources that have been entrusted into the hands. It could be any resource, financial, non-financial, all resources that have been entrusted in your hands, you need to account for it to the people who entrusted it so that they will measure your performance. They will measure your stewardship. How well have you been a steward? If you, 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 you remember the story in the Bible when somebody gave talents to some people and said he was traveling. When he came back, come and account for your stewardship. What did you do with the talents I gave you? That is what accountants do. And it's a very interesting profession. And now I'm sure by the time I finish, many of you will make a decision to join the accounting profession. It's been said that it's one of the oldest professions in the world. So it did not come yesterday or today. And if you become a, a, a chartered accountant, you have to belong to a professional body. You have to belong to a pro like other professionals, like medical, Ghana Medical Association, the Nurses and, and Registered Midwives Association. There is an association. And there are over 200 professional bodies worldwide. And Ghana, ICAG, Institute of Chartered Accountants, belong to that professional body worldwide. So it's a, it's a big uh, association. In Ghana, we have some 
uh, we, we have the Institute of Chartered Accountants, that is the ICAG. We have Institute of Internal Auditors, IIA. We have Chartered Institute of Taxation. It's also another professional body. Then we have Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. That is uh, outside the country, but members, uh, we have students in Ghana who register and write those examinations, and then they also qualify, and they, they hold ACCA. They, we also have Chartered Institute of Management Accountants who also belong to a professional body outside, but in Ghana, you, you must belong to the Institute of Chartered Accountants if you want to practice in Ghana. So even though you would have registered and passed and be certified as a Chartered Institute of Management Accountant, you need to belong to the Institute of Chartered Accountants in Ghana. We also have certified public accountants, that is America. So there are various, these are, they, they, they are not limited to these, there are several of them. So if you want to be a chartered accountant, you decide which of the professional bodies you want to belong to. And I will encourage you to join the Institute of Chartered Accountants. And members of this profession, of this profession are required to act in a manner that is consistent with your expertise. Because if you are a professional, you have some expertise and you need to behave in a manner that is consistent. You need to protect yourself, you need to protect members of your profession so that nobody will say, oh, is that how accountants are? Or is that how doctors or medical practitioners are? So that everybody will speak well of your profession. So who qualifies? Who can become a member or who can register to be a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants or a professional accountant? The requirements are you need to have SSCE, GBCE, or DBS, and you must have six passes from A to D, including English and mathematics, and then YC holders of six credits, including English and mathematics. Then you could also have a university degree or HND in accounting, and since you have all come to Gimba, it means you have met the first two um, criteria. So you, now you are acquiring a degree or a diploma. So it means you are qualified. Once you graduate, you'll be qualified to register as a student and then write. But mind you, you need English, you need mathematics. And I believe that anybody can be an accountant. You don't, some people say, oh, madam, I don't like mathematics. I don't like accounting. It's figures. I tell them anybody can become an accountant. You need to have the interest. You need to have the interest to be one. And then you can, if others have become accountants, you can also be. So you don't need to be afraid that, oh, it is this. It is, it is not too technical or I would say highly quantitative that you cannot do it you can easily do it. Once you have your English and mathematics qualification, and once you have progressed to GIMPA, it means you have met that qualification already. So you can be a professional accountant and a member of the accounting. So what is the examination structure of the Institute of Chartered Accountants? All the others, they have similar um, structure. There are levels of the examinations, level, level one, level two, and level three. So if you have a degree in accounting, you would have exemptions from level one or some of the papers in level one. And if you have a master's, you have additional papers. So in all about um, 13 subjects will be written before you qualify to be an, a professional accountant. This is ICAG, but CIMA, IC, uh, ACCA, CPA, they all have various levels, but it will not be more than 12 papers or 13 papers because the, the, there's collaboration between Ghana cannot have more papers than what others are doing. And so once you, you, you made up your mind, you register as a student, you, there are classes that are organized by the institute or other individuals, there are some uh, uh, individuals who organize um, um, classes. You register and then you write your examinations. Once you pass, you move to the next level. Once you pass, you move to the next People have written, there are some in, in universities who have written, and by the time they graduate, they have their professional certification. So you can combine, or if you don't want to stress yourself too much, just go on, finish your um, degree. Once you graduate, you apply for exemptions, you get some exemptions, and then you 
whilst you are working, you register. You need just to be serious. You need to be serious and committed, and you can easily make it, as your other colleagues have made it. All right. So what other qualifications do you need? You need a, le a minimum level of um, knowledge and expertise. You need a minimum level. The, 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 I did not bring the subjects because you don't need them. That, depending on which one you register, there are various, but they are all business-related courses that you register. So that will give you a minimum level of knowledge and expertise. And as you work in industry, in any working environment, you acquire more knowledge and skills. And so once you pass the exams, you become affiliated to whichever once you registered, and then you become a member. And once you become a member, you are required to act in a manner that is consistent with your expertise. I've said that already. And this is also very important. You have to uphold uh, ethical principles that will not put your profession at risk. Is that okay? These days, things are happening. You have heard what is happening elsewhere in universities, and, and lecturers are being accused of certain things. I'm not going to mention them here. So once you become a professional accountant, you need to act in that manner. You uphold certain ethical principles, certain code of principles, which would be shown to you very soon. You need to keep it. And not only in your workplace, even in your private life. Even in your private life, because if you stand somewhere in a private and you do things, oh, did you see that accountant? Did you see what he was doing? He or she was doing, and that will not speak well of you. And I believe that even you as students, you don't want to stand somewhere and say, oh, is that the student of Gimpa? No. Excellence is our hallmark. We want our students to act wherever they are on campus, at home, with excellence. There are related disciplines in the profession. And you can work in banking and finance, the banking environment. We have auditing and assurance. We have taxation. We have risk management, compliance. These are not exhaustive. I always tell students that wherever you see a business entity or even a charity or public service, there is an accountant. MTN has a, a, a slogan that says, wherever the fund is, there's MTN. And I also say, wherever you see a business entity, you see a charity, you see an organization, there is an accountant. You require accountant. Mention, can you mention any uh, uh, industry or business or educational environment where you don't have accountants? Everywhere, in hospitals, in schools, in the public service, civil service, charity organizations, NGOs, the banks, wherever you have the need for professional accountants. So anywhere, there are so many opportunities out there if you want to join the accounting profession. So what special skills and competencies do you require to be a professional accountant or to be a finance professional? There, there are some from fundamental principles that the International Federation of Accountants have outlined for members of the accounting and finance profession. And one includes integrity. Integrity. You need to, the motto of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana is integrity. What is integrity? Honesty, if you talk about integrity, you are talking about honesty. You are talking about truthfulness. You need to tell the truth at all times. You need to be honest in your dealings with your clients, wherever you find yourself. You need to have courage. Otherwise, you'll be coerced into doing things that are not right. So you need to stand your ground. This is right. This is A, this is B, and you must, or this is white, this is black. You don't have to see, oh, it's, it's, it's gray, or it's, you are not sure which color you are talking about. An accountant needs to have integrity that you can be trusted at all times. You are honest. If you say this, that is what it is. You are not uh, like a, a, a chameleon. You are turning. Today you are green, the next minute you are yellow, or you have so many colors. No, you need to be straightforward at all times. You need to be objective, free from bias in your work, in your dealings with your colleagues, with your clients. Anybody that you are dealing with, as far as your work is concerned, you need to be fair. You need to be impartial. You need to avoid conflict of interest. Recently you heard about uh, the procurement head 
procurement agency head who had done something they said ah conflict of interest so now the person has been interdicted to stay uh, at home so that investigations will go on if you become a professional accountant you don't want that to happen to you so you need to be fair and objective in your dealings what is right is what you must do and not engage yourself in any shady deals you need to have technical competence you need to have technical competence as a professional accountant, as a finance professional. You need to have the technical. What skills do you need? You have to have the knowledge to be able to report. I said you, we account for, we measure, we communicate information. You should be able to communicate that information in a language that is accepted. So you need to have the top technical competence. You need to exercise due care and skill in your work. What are the principles? What are the assumptions? What are the things that you need to follow to be able to, what are the reporting standards? You need to follow all of them. You need to exercise due care and skill. That shows that you are technically competent. Confidentiality, you need to be confident. You need to uh, uh, show confidentiality because in your role as a professional accountant, there are certain information that will come to your knowledge. And you don't have to go and disclose it outside. For instance, let's take you are in Gimpa. You are the finance director in Gimpa. And you are working on people's salary. All the staff of Gimpa, you are the one paying them. So you know the salary of each person. Oh, do you know this man earns so much? Do you know the director's salary is so much? Do you know the person gets these allowances? You are not being confidential. Or you are auditing a client. And then you get some information. Oh, uh, the MD of this company, do you know this is what they do? They have all ABC allowances. No. How did you know? Because of your position as an accounts person or accounting and finance professional. That is why that information came to your knowledge. And you need to keep it to yourself. You don't have to go out and uh, 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 disclose it to uh, persons who are not uh, allowed to do that. You need to report to whoever employed you so you don't have the authority to go out and say broadcast it that this is what is happening, that you have to be professional. In, it happens in all other professions, in the in medical profession, in the nursing profession, in engineering, in other professions. Every profession has its own guidelines and rules and regulations and if you are a professional accountant you need to go by those um, guidelines. There are other qualities that you will need as a professional accounting and finance person. Teamwork is very key because you don't work in isolation. You work with other members and you need to work as a team so that you'll be able to achieve the targets that have been set for all of you. You need to be diligent. You need to be diligent. Do what is required of you. Take extra care. You need to be highly committed to your job, you must show, show interest. I always tell people, if you think that you are not happy with your work, you are free to step out. But you don't sit on the job and you behave anyhow. When clients come, you, you talk to them any. I don't think you as students of Gimpa would want to come to Gimpa, to an office in Gimpa, and then you interact with the person, and the person is so angry with you, as if you are the one who employed the person. You said, ah. I didn't employ you. I didn't ask you to be here. You chose to be here. So once you are here, do what is required of you. If you are not interested, you step out. If you go to a hospital, you want to be spoken to courteously, isn't it? You want the doctor or the nurse to talk to you politely. In the same way, members of the profession have to do that. You have to have a strong personality. Otherwise, you would be coerced into people will um, influence you to do things that are not right. So you need to have a strong personality to resist pressure that may be brought on you in your dealings. And you have to have the ability to work for long hours. If you, you, you have associated with the persons working in a bank, you see that they close very late and in the morning they have to, because you are doing things, you need to come to a conclusion. You need to balance your book. So you need, if, if you do it early, fine, you can go. Sometimes you have to work weekends so you will be able to achieve your targets and then report on time because if you are supposed to report today is the 15th of october you have to make a report available 
for decision making. If you make that report available next month, what have you done? It will not be relevant. It will not be relevant for the decision. So you need to be able to work hard, do hard work and work long hours so that you'll be able to achieve your targets for your or organization or whatever entity you are working with to also achieve the overall targets of the organization. So what are the possible career progressions? What are the possible career progressions? In industry, you can work in audit section. There are various positions with the audit. If you come to GIMPA, the finance section, we have audit, internal audit. People work there. There are various positions. You can work in finance. GIMPA finance office, there are various positions you can work in. We also have compliance. If you go to the banks, they have compliance sections and people with accounting profession also work there. And there are various rules and regulations that you have to comply with. There are people there. Risk management. There are various risks associated with our work. And with every entity there are risks, you need to be able to identify those risks and mitigate the risks. We have accounting and finance professionals in risk management. And then professional practice audits as external auditors. If you come to GIMPA, we have internal audits, but at the end of every year when we have prepared our financial statements, external auditors come and audit our, our, our books. They come and they are not policemen. They come to examine the reports that have been prepared and they give an opinion as experts. And they need to have an independent mind to say, yes, what we have done represents a true and fair view of the position of a, a, a financial report. So that is what external auditors do. We have professional accountants in academia. And that is why, where I am. After working for over 20 years in industry, in audit practice, I said, let me come and teach. So I'll be able to impart some knowledge to students. So you can work in industry, you can work in academia teaching students. So the various positions, accounts, audit officer, director of finance, name them, financial controller, um, everything. We have stores management. We have professional accountants in stores. We have banking. We have professional accountants. Even in procurement, these days, we have professional. In the past, GIMPA procurement used to be under the Directorate of Finance. But now, they are separate. But the person who is heading the GIMPA procurement is a professional accountant. So you have so many opportunities if you enter the accounting pro or you join the accounting profession. You have so many opportunities available to you. There are some innovative tools that you need to um, acquire. Computer literacy, it is very important. But I'm sure you, because of your, now your smartphones are more like computers. But it is not only Facebook and, and, and Instagram and what, whatever, WhatsApp that you need to know. You need to know how computer literacy to be able to do Excel, to be able to do Word because you write reports, and to be able to um, learn some accounting softwares. There are various softwares. In the olden days, in the past, people used to write big books. You, they open one book, it will be from here to there. And then they, they rule lines and they are writing manually. But those days are gone. Now we have computerized software. So you, you study accounting and you apply the principles, but we enter your data in the accounting software and you use it to print your reports and you do the analysis and then you write it for uh, your supervisors. So numeracy comes in analytic skills because you are working with figures and you don't just present the figures, you dump the figures on your supervisors. You need to be able to explain and give them some write-up to help them with the decision. This is what we, we, we set out, expected. This is what we budgeted to do for this year 2019. This is what we have been able to achieve. This is our actual. And the differences, we call them variance. So this is our variances. And how do we explain the variances? We said we're going to raise so much in fees because we are going to admit this number of students. And each student is going to pay so much. So at the end of the year, we should get total revenue from uh, fees of so much. But at the end of the year, we were just halfway. Why? Is it the student numbers that we didn't get? Is it the fees that we're not able to increase? What happened? You need to be able to analyze it and write a report for management so they would know, oh, what should we do? Do we have to do it? You, you, you realize that in Ghana, mid-year, mid the finance minister goes to parliament to do a budget review and then 
present it to Parliament, the performance of the economy, how the economy has fed, budget uh, figures, how the figures are, whether they are achieving the targets or we are underperforming, and what should be done. We, uh, in, uh, this week it has been in the news about uh, talk tasks that the telcos are charging up front. These are all budget uh, media reviews that have come up. So that is what we do in the accounting profession. There are expected challenges. There are expected challenges, I must tell you. What are the challenges? We have ethical principles to uphold. There are ethical principles to So if you fail to uphold your et ethical principles, you bring the profession into disrepute and it will not speak well of us. And somebody will say, what, th what does it mean to be ethical? What is ethics? Ethics simply means custom or character, according to Person and Julian. It means your character. So what is expected of a professional accountant? Have you done that or you are at variance with that character? You remember the banking and financial crisis in Ghana, which started somewhere in 2007, August, to now. We are still in it. This morning, I heard the uh, 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 investors, people who invested their money with local securities, they are going on demonstration in town. A lot of things have happened because people did not manage the resources that were entrusted in. That's how come banks have collapsed. That is how come banks have collapsed. And According to um, the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Mrs. Elsie Awadi, she attributes the collapse to, he, she calls it ethical crisis. It is not a banking crisis, but it is an ethical crisis because people did not do what was expected of them. Those in the financial institutions do not do their work. The regulator, the Bank of Ghana, or the Securities and Exchange Commission members who were supposed to go and supervise and regulate, they also neglected their duties. And that is where we are. And I'm sure some of you, your parents have lost your monies. Or even some of you, I invested money for my children with GoCo Securities. I don't know what is going to happen. Yesterday, I received a message that people from 1st November, they are going to give out uh, uh, computers and, and, and generators. I put my money for investment. I did not say I was coming to buy a computer or a generator. So why are you asking me to come and take a computer or a generator, a settlement for money that I invested with them? Because they did not uphold the ethical principles that they were supposed to. Money that were held, deposited money, were used somewhere else, not for the intended purpose. And, that, and because it had contagion effect, this A invested the money with B, B invested it with C, C invested with D, and so when there's a collapse, it affects everybody. So, so many um, institutions have done it. And dealing with ethical challenges, there's an interesting um, 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 table by Stuart and Etal 2014, and they talk about technical proficiency and ethical sensibility. That if you're an accountant, you need to have both. You need not to be deficient. So if you are deficient technically and ethically, then you are a destructive accountant. And that's why if you have negative here, negative there, you are a destructive accountant. We cannot trust you with anything. If you are technically proficient and you don't have ethics, then you are opportunistic because you, 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 you would exploit your technical competency and, and, and make money for yourself. That is not right. You, you should not be an opportunistic accountant. Neither should you be ethically sensible without the technical proficiency. You need to know your staff, and then you need to be um, ethical so that you become a virtuous accountant. It's an interesting um, table I found, and I, I thought of sharing it with you. All right. So um, this brings me to the end of the presentation, and I want you to, if you have any questions, you are free to ask the questions. Thank you. And, um, you talked about the three levels to be a chartered accountant. I need to. I want to know if, um, like, how many years do you need to complete all of them? Because you said levels, and I want to know, like, is it one year, one level, or like? Written every six months. The examinations of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in May and November. Every six months, examinations are written. So it depends on you how well prepared you are. If you prepare well in the first level, you are able to pass all in May. 
It means you can prepare and write, start writing the part two in November. Because of the number of subjects, if you are not able to write or you write some, and then as you pass, you graduate. So some can write it within one and a half years, depending on how intelligent you are, how prepared you are, how committed, how serious you are, you'll be able to get it within one and a half years. Others will also take time because some will be working and not be students full time. It will take a bit of time. But if you are serious, you'll be able to pass. Let's give yourself three years. If you are very serious, you'll be able to get all within three years and then you will qualify. Uh, I wanted to ask if the classes for the chartered accountant, if let's say you're a student, will it interfere with it? If let's say you're in 300 and you want to start with the chartered accountant, will it interfere with your um, like degree classes? Is it advisable? To do it I know IC has weekend classes. So if you are interested and you can combine, if you can combine and you not be stressed too much, you can do it. I know people in universities, in uh, University of Ghana or even Gimpa who have registered. By the time they graduate level 400, they have qualified. So you need to be serious so that even holidays, you can use your holidays, your long back, instead of just chilling out there with your friends. Be serious, attend classes, read on your own, and then you write the examination. So level 200, if you are interested, you can register and during holidays, or you can register for the ICA weekend school. They attend weekend school, I think Saturdays and Sundays, and then they write. Sometimes people think that you need to read accounting before you can become, no. You can be an engineer, you can be an architect, anybody, once you are interested, you register, and then, you study and you pass. There are study manuals, you pass. So you don't have to be reading accounting. You could be reading anything in Gimpa, hospitality, procurement, supply chain, whatever. If you are interested in becoming a chartered accountant, you get your degree and then you can start and, and you register and you, you go. So you need to have the interest. That is all you need. I've heard from some friends that the French accounting and the English accounting is different too. If I do, I finish my courses, I have to work in an English company or in Ghana. I want to know if this is true. What I know is that we have international financial reporting standards. I don't know if the French have their own. If it's international, it's international. So wherever you are, and once you are able to read English, you can write it and you stand a better chance because you read English and then you can read um, French. So you can apply it. I, I have a colleague, Kwame. Kwame Chumenji worked in Canada. He speaks French. He worked in the French environment. He's a Ghanaian. He's a, he has CPA. So you can work in both environments. If there are standards, you only read the standard. What standards apply? But the basics will be the same. So there won't be much difference. Please, may I know the password for the exam? The institute. It's 50. It's 50. It will not be too expensive out of you. If only you are interested and your parents can afford, fine. Or if you are also working, start saving, right? The money that you get, start saving the money, and then you'll be able to use it to register. In Gimpa, if you are in level 200, can you go and write level 300 as I'm new? You have to finish, you have to finish it. So if you have a paper, you just need to be serious, pass it, and then you move to the next level. So you have to get level one. When you pass all the level, then you move to level two. In the past, it used to be that you have to register all and pass all. And sometimes, but now it's, it's flexible. You can register one paper, you write it. If it's only one, you can register and, and, and study well and pass. You, you put it down, you write the next certain you, every six months, there's a, 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 an examination. So you can register. You take your time at your own pace, and then you pass or you move to the next level. You don't have to register all five or four if you cannot uh, prepare. ICA is local Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana. SEMA is Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. It's in UK, but you, they, they, they have a, a, an office here. It's like ACCA. It's out there, but they have offices here. You can register. It used to be uh, 
So it started Institute of Management Accountants. It's, it just, it's, um, you know accounting, we have various financial accounting, management accounting, auditing, blah, blah, blah. So, but if you have the ICA, you can work in any of the branches. We, we can work in financial accounting, in auditing, in tax, in management accounting, in so many. I have been a, a management accountant before, financial accountant, a general manager, a budget officer, a finance officer, so many positions. If you have the CE, you can work in any environment. Even now, if you have SEMA, you can work in all the environments. But it's like that you are a management accountant. Uh -huh. But if you have ICA, you are a chartered accountant. So all around, you, you, you.